Hi. So sometimes in life, weird things happen. <laughs> Now would be one of those times. And sometimes the things that happen occur in a series of events that seem like a pattern that we like to call a coincidence. But the coincidences that you and I have seen in our lives are nothing compared to some of the insanely freaky coincidences that have gone down in the past. So this week, I gathered the most astonishing ones to share with you guys. So here they are, the 10 freakiest coincidences in history. Number one is the futility of the Titanic. In 1898, writer Morgan Robertson wrote a novel called Futility, which describes the maiden voyage of a luxury ship called the Titan that sinks. The book was published just 14 years before the Titanic sank and the similarities between the book and the actual event are mind-boggling. In the book, the Titan was called unsinkable, so was the Titanic. Both ships were British-owned vessels around 800 feet long and both hit an iceberg and sank. In the book, the Titan sank at midnight in April, 400 miles from Newfoundland. The Titanic sank at midnight on April 14, 1912, 400 miles from Newfoundland. The Titan had 3,000 passengers and not enough life jackets. The Titanic had 2,207 passengers and, well, you get the idea. Man, that is ultra specific. The only thing this book is missing is a character named Leonardo who's an actor that just can't win an Oscar. Number two is the King's Double. In the year 1900 in Monza, Italy, King Umberto I went to a small restaurant for dinner. The king immediately recognized the restaurant owner because he was his exact double both in face and build. After talking, the men discovered even more similarities. They were both born on March 14th, 1844, they were both born in the same town, they both married a woman named Margarita, and the owner opened the restaurant the exact same day Umberto was crowned King of Italy. And if that wasn't enough, on July 29th of that year, the owner of the restaurant was shot and killed, and shortly after, so was King Umberto. Man, that is crazy! I mean, it would never happen nowadays, because there's like 7 billion people in the world, so meeting your exact twin is almost impossible, but still. Uh, hey Matt, I'm just gonna go borrow the car for a minute, is that okay? Well, yeah, no, that that's cool. Okay. Anyways, yeah, it would freak me out to meet my exact twin. Number three is the Ohio Space Connection. There's a really odd connection between the state of Ohio and space slash flight. In 1903, the Wright brothers demonstrated the world's first functioning airplane. They were from Ohio. The first American ever shot into space was John Glenn, who's from Ohio. Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon. Guess where he was from? Mars, no, Ohio. In fact, a total of 25 astronauts have come from that state, so many that NASA actually has a page dedicated to them. Well, if you want to be an astronaut, not, you know where to go. But I'm serious, they'll accept anyone. John Glenn was dangerously unqualified when they accepted him, so it seems like all you need is your ID to say Ohio, and you're in. Number four is King Louis's bad day. Around 1760, when King Louis XVI was a child, he was warned by an astrologist to always be on guard on the 21st day of each month. What followed was bizarre. On June 21st of 1791, he and his queen were both arrested following the French Revolution. On September 21st of 1791, France abolished the institution of royalty and proclaimed its a republic. And finally, on January 21st of 1793, King Louis XVI was executed by guillotine. Man, that's some really bad luck. But surprisingly, despite all that, he was reportedly still very good at blackjack. I guess you win some, you lose some. Number five is The Cannibalized Boy. In 1838, writer Edgar Allan Poe released his only complete novel called The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket. The story is about four men that survive a shipwreck on a stormy sea and are forced to kill and eat a boy named Richard Parker. The disturbing coincidence is that 46 years later, there was a ship called the Miganette that was shipwrecked with only four survivors and, well, you can see where this is going. In order to survive, the three men were forced to kill and eat the fourth survivor, who is a boy named Richard Parker. That is crazy! I mean, if I were there, I'm telling you right now, I would straight up starve because I don't know how anybody could convince themselves to eat another human being. <laughs> it's just veal. It's just veal. It's just me! <laughs> Number six is the unlucky Major Summerford. While fighting in Flanders Fields in 1918, there was a flash of lightning and Major Summerford was knocked off of his horse and paralyzed from the waist down. Only six years later, in 1924, he retired and moved to Vancouver where one day he was fishing and lightning struck directly beside him, paralyzing his entire right side. Miraculously, despite all that, just two years later, he fully recovered and was able to walk again until just four years after 
after that, he was directly struck by lightning, permanently paralyzing him. I should also mention that just four years after his death, lightning struck his tombstone, destroying it. Wow, you know, the odds of all of that happening are shockingly low. In fact, if that sparks your interest, you should Google it. I think you'll find the topic electrifying. Number seven is twin boys with twin lives. In 1940, two identical twins were separated at birth and adopted by different families. Unknown to each other, both families named each boy James. Without knowing each other, both boys grew up pursuing a job in law enforcement, they both had skills in carpentry, they both married a woman named Linda, they both had boys they each named James Allen, they both got divorced and remarried to a woman named Betty, and they both had a dog named Toy. This was all discovered when they reunited 39 years later in 1979. And as great as that must have been, it must have been an awkwardly short conversation. So, we both had the exact same life. Yeah. So I basically already know everything about you. Yep. You wanna go grab a beer? Yeah. Number eight is the Lee family curse. Bruce Lee died in 1973 following the production of what would become his final movie, Game of Death. The movie was based around an actor that gets shot after a prop gun accidentally goes off. What's creepy is that exactly 20 years later in 1993, his son Brandon Lee was shot and killed when a prop gun accidentally went off while shooting the movie The Crow. And as if that wasn't creepy enough, Brandon Lee's death occurred just two months before the release of Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, which is a movie about a demon that battles Bruce Lee and then goes after his son. You know, this story is just all around unfortunate. Not just for the Lee family, but also for the prop guy that was responsible for that gun. He's never working in Hollywood again. Number nine is the mysterious monk. Joseph Egner was a well-known painter in the 19th century who was unhappy with life. Because of this, at the age of 18, he attempted to kill himself, but he was interrupted by a mysterious capuchin monk that he did not know. When he turned 22, he again attempted suicide, only to again be interrupted by the same monk. When he turned 16, he was finally successful in ending his own life, but surprisingly, the funeral was conducted by, you guessed it, the same mysterious capuchin monk. Some people might think this is the work of God, but I think this guy might have just been a creep. I mean, seriously, would you want some random mystery capuchin monk following you around, popping up out of nowhere? What the hell does capuchin mean anyways? I'm all flustered. And finally, number 10, left-handed presidents. There's a weird pattern that exists right now related to American presidents. More than half of the last 14 US presidents have been left-handed. Not impressed? Well, what if I said over the past two decades, almost every single presidential candidate has been left-handed? In 1992, Bill Clinton, George H. Bush, and Ross Perot, all left-handed. In 2008, John McCain, left-handed. And yes, the current president of the United States of America, Barack Obama, left-handed. If you still don't think that's an odd coincidence, Keep in mind that only about 12% of men globally are left-handed, so this pattern statistically is incredible. Wait a minute, maybe left-handed people are just naturally superior and smarter than the rest of us. I mean, I... Oh. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Oh, Bieber. What a little piece of sh**. So that's all for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, if you want to add me to Facebook and Twitter, the links to those will be in the description along with all my other social networking sites. And other than that, I will see you guys back here next Saturday. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> Peace. Oh, uh, hello, Eugene here. Uh, Matt asked me to do the outro screen because he's off taking a dump, and he asked me not to tell you that. Whoops. So, uh, thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please remember to click the big red subscribe button below to subscribe to Matt's channel. He releases a new video every single Saturday. And while you're at it, maybe click the like button and share this on Facebook. Is that, is that normally what he says? Yeah, let's go with that. I, uh, am actually off to go play some Dungeons and Dragons because that's what I like to do on my Saturday nights. So, and no, it's not because I'm a nerd. It's, it's just a coincidence. You would think you would have learned that after this video about coincidences and whatnot. Anyways, goodbye now.